and good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brenda Seiler, lifestyle reporter for the Washington Informer, and I'm excited to bring to you Professor where she is a person who is out there looking at marketing techniques and doing research, consumer behavior. Uh, she's sharing that information with her students at AU, but she's going to share some with us. And I want to talk to you about today. First of all, welcome, Dr. Thank Jenkins. You. Thank you for being with us. Thank and I want, to, I want to start off by talking about um, consumer marketing. And in particular, you're going to talk to us today about uh, products that are specifically marketed as being uh, produced by Black-owned companies. Let's talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so um, this is actually my dissertation research. Um, I finished my PhD uh, in 2023 um, from the University of South Florida down in Tampa. Um, and I got interested in this topic um, during the, the COVID times um, when a lot of uh, businesses and a lot of um, major retailers were starting to mark things as, as Black owned. Um, and I was just curious what impact that really has. And so what kind of research did your, uh, did you find, uh, told you about black owned businesses marketing themselves as such? Yeah. So, um, the research angle that we decided to take on this was looking at, uh, black owned products that are being marketed in large retailers, like, uh, like a Walmart or a Target, something along those lines. Um, and so for the most part, those kinds of retailers didn't specifically mark the products uh, in store that way. They marked them that way online, which so that's the angle that we took on this. Um, and, you know, interesting findings. So um, Black people uh, were more likely to purchase the products when they were labeled as Black owned. Um, but even that came with a caveat. So uh, we found that that was only true when the products were not just marked solely with a black owned label. So it needed to have um, some other things like non-GMO or vegan or um, basically some other cues that people could use to uh, inference like the product quality. Um, so what happened was if it only had a black owned label, black people were less likely to choose it and also less likely to give it a higher product quality rating. Um, but when we combine that with other labels, it served as a cue, basically like, oh, okay, well, maybe this is a good product. Um, so then people were more likely to choose it and um, more likely to give it a higher product quality judgment. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> for non-African-Americans, we never really broke above like a 50-50 kind of split. Um, so not so helpful outside of our population. Um, mm -hmm. And the marker that we use for this um, was colorblind racial attitudes, which is essentially, um, it's researched by uh, Eduardo Bonilla Silva, um, but it looks at the more that you believe that our society is beyond race, like race isn't a factor, um, then you're more likely to believe that, oh, there's no reason for things to be marked this way. So when they are marked this way, you either feel like, A, somebody's trying to guilt you into buying the product, or um, B, that there's some deficiency in the product and they're trying to, quote, make up for it with this label. Um, so the higher that somebody scored on that scale, the less likely they were to choose the Black-owned label product. And that was true for both Black people and non-Black people because Black people also can share those kinds of attitudes. <laughs> well, I used to see a, an influencer on Instagram who would periodically come out with, here are the latest products that I have found that are produced by black owned companies. Mm -hmm. And she would tell you what show the, the label or the bottle or go into the stores and take a picture and mm -hmm. let you know where you could actually buy those particular products. Um, which to me is kind of like a, um, uh, a very easy way to promote your product and maybe not have to pay advertising dollars for it. Yeah. This is a woman, this is a woman that was going out on her own doing mm -hmm. the research. In your research that you've done, have you been able to find other different ways than the traditional advertising, taking an ad out, putting up signs in a store or whatever, that black owned uh products are marketed to our population, to black audiences, or to the population at large? 
Yeah, so actually that is the perfect strategy. Um, that's one of the things that I recommend uh, in this particular paper is the strategy of using bloggers and influencers to highlight um, black owned products versus actually tagging them that way. Um, because then you avoid having any of the negatives that could come from being tagged that way. Um, because people who watch those kinds of content um, generally are the people who are going to go do that anyway. So the algorithm is going to push that to them. It's unlikely to ever go to anyone who wasn't going to uh, shop black owned products. So it's actually the perfect strategy is to use, um, you know, influencers and bloggers to promote black owned products versus actually um, tagging it that way in the store. Um, <clears throat> some of the other um, strategies that we suggested were instead of having the product directly labeled as black owned, um, a lot of companies offer the um, ability to have a page where they list all of their black owned products. And so instead of having your product specifically marked as that in the general product search, um, you can just have it on the page for the black owned products. That way, those who are seeking that know, you know, oh, this is where I can go to find these kind of brands to support that. Um, but you don't face any of the negative backlash that could come from being labeled that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, some of the other things we suggested were um, um, it to, if you're going to use utilize these kind of labels, um, to utilize it in spaces where there's already an ethnically owned section, um, because then it's actually seen as more authentic because it's fitting within the brand, right? So if you're already looking for something that was, you know, if you're in the ethnic aisle already and you see something that's labeled as black owned, then you're like, oh, okay, this product actually uh, is more authentic when it's labeled that way. Um, and our last thing was um, capitalizing on opportunities when something happens in the media um, around Black people. That actually is a time where people are more likely to support Black owned. Uh, so unfortunately, that that falls off. But um, we found, or well, actually, uh, in another research paper um, that looks at this um, for Black owned restaurants, they found that uh, so in the like three four weeks right after some incident happens. Uh, where people are really focused on Black people, um, yeah. you get a boost for Black-owned businesses. But it, of course, falls off because people feel like, oh, I did my good deed, I support it, uh, and they fall off, which we also find in the product space is that people will, will buy the product initially, um, but unless they, like, literally, we, we run a one to seven scale on liking, and unless someone extremely likes the product, uh, they're unlikely to come back again and purchase um, for non-Black people. Uh, whereas we ran it with other cues, like instead of using black owned, we did like um, just a new business. We did um, like a, it was for a brand of cookies. So we did like non-GMO or vegan brand of cookies um, and no other condition did they have to extremely like it uh, to come back and purchase it again, unless it was the, uh, the black owned label product. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for talking with us today. I hope that there are some entrepreneurs listening to us that can benefit from the research findings that you have brought with us today, because there's room, I think there's room for all the entrepreneurs in the products that they might have for us. Uh, but marketing is uh, a big part of it. Advertising is only one tactic. There's so many tactics that can be engaged uh, in order to market your products. And thank you for sharing some of those findings with us. Folks, we've been listening to uh, Professor Kalia Jenkins. She is uh, a professor at American University. She focuses in on consumer behavior and marketing. And we've been talking about uh, putting out there and promoting black owned businesses and their products. So thank you for being with us today and please stay in touch. And if you're doing more research, we'd like to hear more of what you're doing. Awesome. Thank you. Will do. Thank you.